Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look into simple harmonic motion. We're basically going to get introduced to the notion of SHM or simple harmonic motion. What is simple harmonic motion? Let's go over the definition only. I know you have never heard of this, but let's just understand the definition of simple harmonic motion. You've already seen this in uh, varied experiments and in different oscillating uh, objects. So you will eventually understand why simple harmonic motion is so distinct and uh, is differently explained or described. So what is the definition of simple harmonic motion? It is a type of oscillation in which the acceleration, the acceleration of the body, of a body is proportional to its displacement, but acts in the opposite direction. Great. So if I bring in an example of this pendulum again. This is the equilibrium position, right? If I shift it rightwards, if I shift it rightwards, what am I doing? I'm putting it leftwards, sorry. I'm putting it rightwards and giving it potential energy, right? I'm holding it over here. I'm holding it over here and giving it potential energy. Great. So if I uh, just add a notion or a key, which is if I'm, I'm taking uh, the right side as positive and taking the left side as negative, this is the key for this, um, I don't know, description. We're taking right as positive and left as negative. Great. So um, I'm holding this bob on, on the right side and it has potential energy. Great. So if I leave it, the moment I leave it, it will come over here and it will not stop. It will continue to oscillate and get over here. So what can we deduce from this? The moment you left this bob, it kept accelerating until over here. Why does it stop accelerating over here? Because in this position, max potential energy. In this position, max kinetic energy. And again over here, max potential energy. So what is happening? You know the equation of uh, kinetic energy is half mv squared. Now you know half is a constant and m is a constant, meaning the mass is not changing. What is changing? Velocity. So for there to be maximum kinetic energy in this position, Let's say 2, the variable is velocity. So the velocity needs to be maximum in position 2. Therefore, we know that the velocity is maximum in position 2. So, um, as I started off uh, with this description, I told you I'm holding the bob in this position, let's say 1. And if I'm holding the bob at position 1, it has no kinetic energy. And if I've only um, released the bob in position 1, it has no kinetic energy, it has potential energy. If it has no kinetic energy, that means the speed is 0, velocity is 0. Velocity is 0. Great. So if velocity is 0, we can say, and we can draw a graph from this, where here velocity is 0, v against time, velocity is 0. Over here, velocity is max. Over here, velocity is again 0. And if you repeat this from here to here, velocity starts reaching, reaching max again, but in the opposite direction. So it's in the negative axis. So it reaches maximum velocity, but in the opposite direction from, let's say, 3, position 3, position 3 to position 2. Again, reaches maximum velocity, but in the opposite direction and then again reaches velocity 0 in position 1. So this is the velocity graph. Now what did we want to know? Or what did we want to learn from this experiment? Or from this description? We wanted to know about the acceleration. Now I would expect all of you to know about differentiation already from maths. If you know about differentiation, you should know that if you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration. 
this very thing is position two. This is position two as well. This is position one. This is position three. Great. Now, the thing is, at the maximum velocity, if you take the derivative and you find the slope, which is basically the acceleration, you will see acceleration at two is zero. Meaning, when the bob is in position two, acceleration is freaking zero. Acceleration is zero. However, if you see initial position, initial position one, if you take the slope, if you do the derivative, if you differentiate, you will get acceleration is maximum. It's fictive maximum. So when V is zero, acceleration is max. Great. So it's going to be the same for this as well. If V is zero over here, acceleration is max. Nice. So from this, we already know where velocity is zero, where acceleration is maximum. So now we need to figure out in which direction is the velocity and acceleration active. We need to find that out. Okay, let's figure it out. For the object, for the bob, in position one, we have taken right as positive and left as negative, great. So for position one, if we carefully look into the bob, the bob is trying to move in which direction? It's trying to move leftwards. Velocity is zero, but the acceleration exists and it's maximum. Which direction will it act? Obviously, leftwards. If it is leftwards, we can say there is negative acceleration. Because we are taking left as negative. So we write negative A is equals to or proportional to proportional to what is the displacement of Bob at position one? Is it left of the equilibrium or right of the equilibrium? This is equilibrium. This pink Bob position. At position one the bob is displaced rightwards, which is right of the bob in the rightwards direction. This is the rightwards direction. So the displacement for bob at position one is going to be positive because we have taken right as positive, the direction rightwards as positive. So we are going to say negative A is proportional to negative, uh, sorry, positive A. Why? Because look at the definition. It is a SHM or simple harmonic motion is a type of oscillation in which the acceleration is proportional. Acceleration is indeed proportional to its displacement, but in the opposite direction. So you can see, you can write from here, if you take the negative sign on this side, it's the simple harmonic motion equation. And we could prove it theoretically from this experiment. Which is, if you pay attention, the acceleration, let's say uh, for position 3, in this case, the acceleration is going to be in this direction, but the bob is displaced left of the equilibrium. So acceleration is in this direction, displacement is in the opposite direction. So it is indeed true that the acceleration and the displacement will be opposite in direction. So we know the acceleration and displacement is proportional. However, it is in the opposite direction. So now we know the definition and the reasoning behind simple harmonic motion. Now you might wonder that where are we getting this equation from? How is it derived? Before that, let me tell you that uh, since A is proportional to minus X, this is not the equation, this is the proportionality. So if you turn it into an equation, 
um, a is equals to minus kx. What is the constant? What is the constant? In simple harmonic motion, the constant is going to be omega squared. It is minus omega squared x. This, this. Omega square is the constant. Why is omega square the constant? Good question. The point is, there is a very big derivation for it, and I'll show you how this is derived. And uh, why the constant is supposed to be omega square and not just omega or not just any other variable. I mean, not just any other constant. So, there's a long derivation for it, but before that, I want to clear up the concept of the definition. I showed you the Bob experiment, the um, experiment where the acceleration and displacement is in opposite direction. And that was, the Bob experiment was an example of simple harmonic motion. If any experiment, any oscillation is going to um, work by this definition, that oscillation will be called simple harmonic motion where the acceleration is proportional to the displacement but in opposite direction. A few examples would be pendulum clock which I just showed. The other one could be mass on spring where if you take this mass and tire mass sorry if you take a spring and tire mass this will oscillate if you pull it down it will keep oscillating up down up down and this will create, this will create a nice graph. What are the graphs going to look like? How do you calculate displacement in those graphs? And how do you get this equation of acceleration? We'll talk about that in the next video.